Hi everybody, Robin Nichols back with a little bit of a chat about black and white. Black and white used to be a fantastic medium uh, back in the days when we could buy black and white photo paper and black and white film and somebody in a photo lab would print it and process the film of course and print the results. And We had a range of fantastic subtle tints and toners we can apply I suppose you call it in post-production by sloshing the black and white print around in very smelly and often quite noxious chemistry uh, in order to put you know a plum colored tint into it for uh, selenium toning for example or sepia toning or red or yellow toning there were some fantastic things out there but of course they were quite dangerous they were expensive you had to spend hours in the dark room they stained your fingers and goodness knows what other health things that happened to us the great thing about digital photography is you can just do that in the post-production darkroom. So to start off, I duplicate the layer. As you can see here, I've got a duplicate layer. Let's just trash that and start again and show you. If I press Control or Command J on the keyboard, it just duplicates it. Sure, you can drag this up to the Create New Layer button and let go, and it duplicates it again. Or I can go to the Layer menu and choose Duplicate Layer and OK, and I get the duplicate layer. But Control or Command J is the fastest, easiest way of doing it. And the reason I'm doing it, just so I can compare the black and white with the color original. So this is a highly saturated scene, so it's a very strong color image. So I've looked at the hue and saturation uh, tutorial, how to make black and white, simply by making the saturation go down to zero. Notice with interest how the upper part of the sky, which is quite deep blue, almost looks lighter once it's converted to black and white. Now, here's a tip, and I'm going to click on cancel. No, I'm going to click on OK. Here's a tip. When we've done these conversions, and if you, for example, shoot black and white in the camera, you'll find that when you import them to the computer, or when we've completed a conversion like I've just done now, you'll find that sometimes the black and white looks a bit wimpy. And what I mean is the tones in the houses, fantastic contrast in the rocks, so the highlight end of these tones actually look pretty good. It's the mid-tones have gone a bit flat. So we've got some fairly good blacks under the uh, road bridges here in the deeper ocean areas around here. But in the distance, it's gone a bit hazy and it's gone a bit flat. So I almost always insist when you do that, get hold of levels, which is Control or Command L. Or indeed, I can go Adjust Lighting Levels and have a fiddle with maybe probably not the shadows, but mostly the mid-tones there. We can just darken it down. See what happened there? So you can just darken it down just a smidge to make it more impressive. We can just even pump up the highlights a little bit. Something like that. Just to add a bit of visual oomph into the picture. So you could do that. I'm just going to duplicate this layer again. So that layer we've just done there, that's just using hue and saturation. So let's go back to a new layer and try the dedicated black and white tool. Uh, we will find that under the Enhance menu, Convert to Black and White. This is very cool because it actually shows you what it's doing. So hue and saturation is just reducing the values to zero. So we've actually got no color values happening, a.k.a. it goes into Black and White. Now, the funny thing about this tool is you've got these preview windows and you've got a preview in the background because it actually does it in front of you. So rather than judging things from these tiny preview windows, I sometimes move it out of the way so that you can see what we're doing here. So what are we doing? We're choosing a flavor. And so uh, Photoshop Elements gives you a number of flavors to try. And these are kind of just pre-cooked recipes. One of the things I say to people is you can have a look here and choose one that's actually a little bit flat and boring. And the reason I say that, let's have a look at infrared there. It's pretty dramatic. I like that. One of the reasons for the boring look, and I'm just going to flick through it like newspaper, is what it does is it converts into black and white, and it doesn't lose any tones. I think it's going to lose a little bit in the white there. What do you reckon? Does that look a little bit on the bright side? Okay, reset. Mm, maybe. So that was the newspaper. Portraits. Scenic landscape. Oh, that's snappy. Urban and vivid. Yeah, they're all a bit they're all a bit peaky actually. What I mean by that is when you look at them actually it actually bumps up the contrast quite a lot. So we have to be a little bit careful. So what I suggest you do is having a look at the picture, just choose some of this. I'm going to go back to the infrared in a minute because I think that's fantastic, but I'm going to choose something like, you know, even newspapers probably okay. All right, it's a little bit bright in there. And then we can fine tune it a little bit. And you do it by splitting it into red, green, and blue. So, you know, I can slide the red up here a little bit. It goes really murky, or I can move it down. As a general rule, if we just take, for example, the newspaper recipe, and I move the red slider that way, 
I need to move one of the other sliders equidistant the other way. All right, it's a bit weird because it kind of sort of shows you color and then it flicks back into black and white. So the idea being is if I push one one way, I can actually lower the contrast. And I might actually I'll put that that way, actually. There we go. I may actually retain some more detail, for example, in those highlights. Let's push the red a little bit further that way. Now we're getting a slightly more dramatic effect. So the red again pushes down that way. And I may pull the green back. So the reason we're dealing with the green and the blue and the red channels is simply because it affects different tones in the picture. So you can get a more dramatic sky, for example, by pushing the red all the way down and then the green come up. See the dramatic side? And that is a little bit like the infrared effect where we push the blue up. Okay, look at that. Wow! That's insane. All right, and then we push the green down a bit just to brighten it up a bit. So this is very infrared -y. If you have no idea what Robin's talking about, infrared film makes anything that's got chlorophyll in it, i.e. green living things, go white. Obviously the buildings are white because they're painted white, but the stuff that's green actually comes out white. It's quite a weird effect. Blue sky goes almost black, and blue sea will go almost black. So you get a very high drama picture. That's a little bit too dramatic. So what I want, just to go back to my original suggestion, is probably just to choose something that's kind of OK, and you click OK. So that's fantastic, but again, it looks a bit boring. It's even more boring than my edited version. So again, I probably need to access Control or Command L, and then possibly push the contrast up, maybe the brightness in the, in the mid-tones, and then maybe bring the shadows down, just to add a bit more visual oomph to the picture. OK. You know, that's reasonable. It's not brilliant, but it's reasonable. If you find, for example, you don't like the blacks, they've just, they've just blocked in. You see, they're actually jet black, aren't they? And we zoom in. Oh, zoom in, zoom in. You can see, yes, it is a little bit on the contrasty side. So what I can do is possibly do this. I can adjust the lighting in the shadows. All right. By default, this tool adds 35% brightness to the shadows. It's horrible. So I'm going to say, forget it. Let's make it about 5% brighter. Off, on. You see what it means? It just reveals a little bit more detail. You may even want to go really risky and go about 9 or 10%. I can try and darken the highlights. I don't think that's going to really work, or is it? Yep, it kind of darkens the highlights. If you darken the highlights too much, your picture does look a bit weird. Before, afterwards. Nope, I don't want to darken the highlights. Do I want to mess around with the mid-tone contrast? Probably can pull it down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to click OK. All right. So I've used another tool to try and bandy around some of the tonal problems I've got here. But the thing we have in the darkroom was the ability to add color. Or we could even buy a photo paper. I remember one particularly called Kodak Royal Bromesco. It added this kind of greeny yellow tint to the picture, very subtle, and it just made it a warm tone picture. What on earth is he talking about? I'll show you. If we use Enhance Adjust Color, and think, what? How can we adjust the color? It's very easy. I'm going to use color variations. Color variations allow me, allows me to add a dollop, a teaspoon, or a bucket of color to the photo. But not just to the photo globally, I can add it to the highlights only, the shadows only, or the midtones. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add a little bit of green into the shadows, and a little bit or a lot is controlled by the intensity slider here. So a little bit of green, increase green, increase green, and then I go to the highlights, and I'm going to add a load of yellow. Decrease blue, decrease blue, decrease blue, decrease blue. It's very hard to see because it doesn't update in the big picture window. Click OK. That's a little bit too much, but you get the idea. That's before, that's afterwards. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to press Control u and just desaturate that a little bit. Pull it back down a little bit, something like that. And I'm going to use variations again, I think. Well, let's enhance, adjust, color variations. And the midtones, I'm going to stick a little bit of decreased blue, a little bit of yellow into the highlights. I think we're just going a little bit of yellow into the highlights. OK, and we'll just try that. Maybe exactly the same. So a tinted picture. It actually looks quite nice. I could go and do it a slightly different way. Again, enhance, adjust the color, color variations. And this time I'm going to add a little bit of red, ding, dink, actually just one dink, <laughs> probably a teaspoon or a serving spoon of red, and then add some yellow into the highlights. So it's a combination of red and yellow, warms it up really quite nicely. There we go, isn't that nice? So this is before, this is afterwards. Before, 
afterwards. So you don't go so far that it becomes obviously a sepia picture, for example. You just add a hint of color so that it's no longer a black and white picture. That's the black and white picture. That's the hint of color. And in fact, it's probably a little bit too much of a hint. So I might just pull that back a little bit and click OK. So again, there we go. And you can see different. That's the original picture. So that very simply is how we can convert to black and white. There are other ways of doing it. I think this is quite good. If you really want to get deadly serious about it, you can buy third-party plugins from people like Nick Software, NIK, and they will allow you to get down and dirty and recreate the look of black and white film, for example, almost any black and white film that ever created. A really neat little feature, but of course you pay extra for that. Here we're just customizing the black and white by getting a fairly low contrast black and white effect happening, and then adding some tone, some contrast, and also some tint back into the picture once we've reduced it to black and white.